Hello everybody. You ever wondered why the right hates veganism so much? Well, I have. I personally describe myself as center-right. I think a lot of people who know me personally would agree with that. So I'm very familiar with spaces on the right, and they are absolutely obsessed with veganism, especially mock meat, soy, and vegetable oils. And if you ever scrolled through YouTube shorts, maybe you've seen the endless videos of Piers Morgan destroys vegan activists, destroys being in all caps, and it's Piers Morgan talking over someone not letting them speak and giving absolutely the lowest IQ take you've ever heard in your entire life. And the channel that uploaded it is something called like Return to Masculinity with a Greek statue as a profile picture. I'm already getting off topic. I told myself this was going to be a structured video. So, I've come up with 10 reasons that I believe explain this phenomenon. By the way, yes, it is a coincidence that it's 10 reasons. I did not plan on it, but I guess it makes for good clickbait anyway, right? So these reasons are, one, the GOP's base and the Democratic Party's base. Two, the right's faith and tradition. Three, the nature argument and God. Four, vegan intersectionality. Five, inherent distrust of the system and government. Six, environmental concerns. Seven, the facts don't care about your feelings idea. 8. Individualism 9. Myths about nutrition and health and 10. Aligned with masculinity because it's the most complicated. So first, the GOP's base and the Democratic Party base. So rural areas are more conservative and urban areas are more liberal. The people in the rural areas are growing up around animal farms or even farmers themselves and therefore they're less likely to be opposed to animal farming and are more likely to be opposed to veganism. There's also the misconception about vegan elitism, particularly that it is more expensive. Uh, also, the majority of the Republican Party is men, and the minority are women, as opposed to the minority of vegans, which are men, and the ma vast majority, which are, vegan, which are women. Sorry, I hope that sentence made sense. Another thing to note is that LGBT people are overrepresented in the vegan community significantly, and that is for a variety of reasons. Uh, finally, because politics are inherently tribal, the right probably has an instinctive desire to reject veganism just because it's associated with liberalism, and this idea is important to keep in mind for the rest of this video as well. Second is the right's faith and tradition. So conservatives are conservatives, right? They're con concerned with upholding traditional American values. Uh, conservatives also believe that tradition has inherent wisdom that should not be tossed away, which I can sympathize with. Uh, they also seem to view veganism as some form of cultural imperialism, and obviously eating animals is traditional in most cultures. However, I want to point out that this doesn't mean that we should uphold all traditions without thinking through them first, right? For example, we shouldn't have not freed the slaves just because it upheld the tradition of slave owning. And the idea of upholding something just because it has been upheld is just a stupid idea. Third is the nature argument and God. So conservatism and the right is religiously or at least philosophically based on Christianity. And there's this verse in Genesis that says that God gave humans dominion over everything with which creepeth the earth. And I talked about that in my video, I think it was called, If We Aren't Supposed to Eat Meat, Why Are They Made of Food Plus God, Though? Uh, there's also the theme of sacrifice in the Bible, for example, ritual animal sacrifice, and then there's the story of Abraham and Isaac, and of course, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, one thing to note here is that with the partial exception of Jesus, all of these interpretations of sacrifice in the Bible are done without the consent of the one which is sacrificed. And this could be interpreted as a justification for Christians paying for the mass enslavement and murder of animals as they are sacrificed for a benefit, i.e. abused. Uh, finally, there's this view of human exceptionalism. Us vegans call this speciesism, which is 100% accurate in this context, and I'm sure that the right, or at least Christians, would agree. And uh, vegans actually, for the most part, agree with speciesism as well because we place ourselves higher than animals, we just don't think that animals should be killed and abused. Interestingly, uh, they still believe in the principle that we shouldn't abuse animals like dogs for no reason, which means that they do put value on their lives and are con actually conceptually aligned with vegans because veganism is just basically applied anti-animal abuse, uh, but they have a double standard. 
And there's the idea of nature and tradition being linked. And this goes back thousands of years BC uh, when mammoths were a thing. And to the tradition of hunter-gatherers. And there's the idea that hunting and eating animals must be optimal for health just because it's what humans had to do to survive. And the, uh, there's the idea of the apocryphal perfect health of the hunter-gatherer, which is just completely not true. Uh, fourth is vegan intersectionality. And this is mainly something that vegans have done to themselves, intentionally attempting to, blind vegan to blend veganism with leftist ideology, especially with communism for some reason. And my working theory about this is that communist societies are vegan because nobody can eat anything, including animal products. Or maybe it's just that us vegans, like communists, believe in this utopian idea and we reject the ideas of God and nature and we're cut from the same cloth and we're all Satanists. <laughs> Fifth is the inherent distrust of the system and government. So the right by and large was against the handling of the coronavirus uh, via lockdowns, including recommendations by the World Health Organization specifically. And coincidentally, the WHO has uh, classified processed meat as a class one carcinogen. Uh, the narrative is that the system, the matrix, and the government are promoting veganism. And this is ironic just because of the amount of lobbying that's done by the animal products industries, as well as the fact that pro-meat propaganda lies about health are being and have been pushed in grade school, as well as the industry-funded pro-meat studies which are published all the time, and finally the gigantic animal products advertising conglomerate. And there's also this idea that of the plan to basically chemically castrate the masses, and this theory absolutely is real. And this has to do with microplastics, polyester, and also vegetable oils and soy. Seed oils are of the devil. They are the cause of every problem in the world. Wow. Almost, almost, I would say 99%. I am so, I'm so won over on this. Now, your wife is a doctor. And the misconceptions about vegetable oils and soy have gotten a lot worse over the last few years, but they have existed before, especially the soy myth. Also, side note, I'm not saying that vegetable oils are good for you, uh, especially not microplastics and polyester. Uh, vegetable oils are not good for you, but they're significantly better for you than animal products. And soy is actually very healthy. And this is personified in the soy boy meme, and I've got to say, guys, check out the shorts that I uploaded on my lifts. I recently hit a 135 overhead press uh, for like three reps. I am a soy boy, right? I currently have chest tendonitis. Uh, when I hit a 225 bench, uh, just know that that's a soy boy hitting that weight. And I eat plenty of soy. I eat loads of tofu and edamame. So eat your soy, guys, if you want to be a soy boy like me. And of course, the myths about uh, soy are ironic because whatever you think about soy, cow's milk contains a ton of mammalian hormones, including estrogen. Sixth is the environmental concerns. So most large left leftist figures which advocate for veganism do it primarily or exclusively in the context of environmental protection. The right is extremely skeptical of environmental concerns. They believe that it harms jobs and industries. They don't think the problem is bad enough as people make it out to be. And they're extremely skeptical of globalism, which is very related to environmental protection. And I just want to say this, the philosophy of veganism is not really related to environmental protection. It certainly is a benefit and a substantial one at that. But veganism would still be a thing if plant agriculture was worse for the environment, which it is not. Seventh is the idea of facts over feelings, or facts don't care about your feelings. So the facts don't care about your feelings phrase has specifically been a part of the rights lexicon since like 2016. 
And veganism is a philosophy which is partially motivated by empathy. And the right interprets that as naive vegans who don't know anything about the world making a purely emotional choice because we just can't handle the fact that the cute little animals that we care about so much need to be gas chambered to death and stabbed in the throat or else the world will stop spinning and we'll all die. And this is just a necessary part of existence. And this is just not the case. Eighth is individualism. So the right largely sees veganism as an imposition on personal freedoms and liberties. And despite being fundamentally Christian, a large part of the right is actually very libertarian. And proving my point is the I just want to grill for God's sake meme, saying that they just want to be left alone, ignoring the fact that so did the animal that they paid to be enslaved and murdered that is currently burning on that grill. And this definitely will be its own video. And there's the existence of fishing and hunting culture as well. I didn't really know where to talk about that, so uh, I'll just leave it right here. Ninth is myths about nutrition and health. And the thing is, the health benefits and the adequacy of veganism are backed up by scientific research, but not by conventional wisdom because of primarily the nature argument and tradition. And the right typically values conventional wisdom over scientific research because we're all transhumanist elitist lab coats. Yes, lab coat is an actual insult used by the right to disparage people who use scientific evidence. I believe that the phrase was pioneered by Nick Fuentes or John Doyle. And I understand the sentiment that like we shouldn't only be caring about numbers and that statistics can lie, but at some point you're just wrong. <laughs> so sometimes the right will ironically try to use research to argue the point of soy specifically, or try to argue that eggs have nothing to do with dietary cholesterol or coronary artery disease. And I've never seen a person on the right cite a study about this that wasn't obviously poorly conducted, and provably so, but you can't really blame them because it's hard trying to prove something that isn't true. And there's the idea of soy and vegetable oils being the worst things ever, but there's also protein and overall vitality. Protein is the major one. For some reason, the right also th especially thinks that all vegans are either emaciated or fat, uh, which side of the spectrum that we all lay on uh, depends on who you ask. And obviously that's completely self-contradictory. And this point, especially nutrition and health, ties into and feeds into almost everything else that I talked about in this video. And tenth, finally, is meat and masculinity. So the right is obsessed with traditional gender roles, especially masculinity. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, and meat and masculinity is definitely going to be its own video. Uh, so I'll just not talk about it that much here. Sorry if you stayed until the end specifically for this, uh, you've been scammed. Thank you for watching everybody, and be vegan.